One of the projects I've been working on this summer at my home is to upgrade my PLC uh, monitoring system, the one that I had monitoring w uh, ambient air temperature inside the house and outside the house. I've been working on changing that system, uh, moving away, migrating away from a Automation Direct DL06 PLC to an Al Allen Bradley SLC 500. And this is the result so far. Uh, in my office desk, got myself the Allen Bradley all set up, a 24 volt power supply for uh, 4 to 20 milliamp loop power and discrete I.O. and got the uh, 504 processor, a couple cards with discrete outputs, three cards discrete inputs, one analog out and three analog in. Now currently I'm not doing a whole lot with it. I've got a lot more I.O. and processing capacity than I'm using at the moment, but it's just a start. The HMI panel, same one I had on the wall before, is right here. And as you can see I've got um, different menu display buttons here. I've got one for rainwater collection. I've got a rainwater collection system I'm going to be monitoring the level in. Uh, right now the transmitter is disconnected, which is why all the tanks are reading empty and the bar graph shows nothing. Uh, but it also uh, has a pump on it, a submersible pump in one of these rainwater tanks. We can turn that on using a push button. So I've got set up so if you push the push button next to the water storage tanks, the PLC measures the time that you've held the button down and then runs the pump for 100 times that amount of time you held the button down. So if you held the button down for one second, the pump would run for 100 seconds. If you held the button down for one and a half seconds, the pump would run for 150 seconds. And if you want to turn it off, you just briefly tap the button, and that momentary push, the momentary actuation of that button translates into 100 times that, which is usually just a few seconds, and the pump shuts down. And also measuring weather right now, I have an RTD temperature sensor. Currently, we are measuring, let's see, 76.6 degrees right here. I'm capturing the high and the low temperatures and then graphing over time. Outside ambient temperature is the most important temperature variable to me right now because I bicycle and so does my wife. We both commute by bicycle. And so it's important in cold weather to know um, if it's possible of uh, ice on the roads. So in addition to the live display of temperature, the high and low capture, and the graph, I also have an ice alert. If it drops below about 35 degrees, the ice alert will turn on. In fact, I can demonstrate that right here. I can briefly disconnect the analog loop power and simulate a low temperature condition. And when I do that, we have right here an ice alert. And uh, the ice alert has now gone away. The temperatures come back up. But it records how many minutes ago an ice alert happened, uh, up to three hours. So up to 180 minutes, it'll let you know, hey, there was an ice alert uh, that long ago to let us know the possibility of ice or frost on the road before we set out on our bicycles. Some of the other things I plan to have on the system is uh, wind monitoring. I want to measure wind speed and uh, plot that in a little uh, metered graph as well as a flagpole that tips over with stronger and stronger wind. I also want to measure rainfall. I don't have a rainfall sensor yet. Uh, security. I want to put motion sensors in the yard to detect when deer try to get in and eat our uh, fruit and vegetables and then turn on a, a water spray to scare them away. And I also want to monitor our heating and cooling system so we can monitor energy usage, especially in the wintertime. So anyway, uh, that's what I got going on so far. Much more capable PLC now than the old unit that I had and I'm uh, going to have a lot of fun with this. Anyway, that's what I've been doing this summer.